Two, three, four, five. All right. I thought she had said that I, you're on here and she couldn't get it on. Okay. That's why I didn't mess with anything. Okay. I think we turn stuff back on or off or whatever. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, good to see everybody this morning. Amen. Amen. And, um, well, how are you doing? Yes. Good. Good. Good to see you. Hadn't seen you in a while. Uh, well, that's the, uh, another one of them Abernathy's. <laughs> they just keep coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> yeah. In case you can't tell, they favor. Just let them smile. Uh, you, won't, you won't get past that one. All right. Well, good to see you, Cassie. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good to see everybody else and uh, happy to have you. Uh, real quick announcement. No Tuesday night Zoom prayer and no Wednesday night service. Because you need to be doing what we be doing. Getting the bird ready. Yeah. I am disappointed this year. I could not find my 26-pound butterball. I only found a 21 and a half, and that was like, come on, guys, where's the big bird? You know? Uh, <laughs> well, frozen. These are fresh butterballs. Yeah, but we don't ever, I mean, if you don't want, if you're happy with the frozen, which we have been for decades, don't go get you a fresh butterball because once you do it, you'll be like, ah, I can't go back. <laughs> Maybe in July, but not at Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Praise God. It was, it's just the whole family's like, we can't ever go back. 
this has to be the way it is. So it is the way it is. It'll be good. We will throw down on it. And throw down on it. We'll take all the dark meat, make turkey salad, and throw down on it. Glory to God. Amen. And just, it's, you know, you've heard the 12 days of Christmas. How about the 12 meal, meals of Thanksgiving? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. So, who? Okay. So you're doing it, not the other one, huh? Cap, he's not helping? Testing. All right. Okay. All right. So we have a few announcements. We have a lot of announcements. So I'm helping Pastor out because there's a whole list of things going on. Besides not having church this week. Yeah, and that was the first one on my oh, list. Okay, well. <laughs> so no prayer, no church this week. Um, December 2nd, 6 p.m. is our Christmas party. That's coming up quick. There will be a sign-up sheet coming out through our text system this afternoon. So we will be sending out a sign-up sheet, um, and it will be coming out that way. December 3rd, so two weeks from today, okay, December 3rd, we are having church app launch day. So make sure you bring your devices. Um, the easiest thing will be to make sure you have a QR code reader. So I know if you have an iPhone, it's built into the camera. But if, I don't know if it's the same way. Is it the same way? Okay. <laughs> I don't know other platforms. Cap saying yes, it is. <laughs> um, so make sure you know you know how to use a QR code. If you don't, we can help you with other options. Um, but also on December third, our angel tree. You have to go take your name and sign up on the sheet and put that number beside your name because we need to have yeah. that, on, that. You have to do that. Okay. All right. Yes. And then December 10th, there is a box in the foyer that's wrapped. It looks like a little present. We're doing a food drive, a canned food drive for Urban Ministries <coughs> in Greensboro. That's an annual thing that we've done for years. But um, this year, Urban Ministries, it was actually in the news, they have seen a 30% increase in need and a drop in supply. And we want to make a difference in our community. And we want to touch those people that are find themselves in need. And so um, we're going to do our annual food drive. So you can bring canned food between now and December 10th and leave it in that box. And then the church will take it to Urban Ministries and donate it. Um, or beside the box. Or beside the box. The box. Like the whole we need. Hopefully it fills up quick. <laughs> So when that happens, just put it beside the box. Um, and then December 22nd at 2 p.m. Let, let me interrupt you. Oh, okay. You, you just, you know, you, great. Okay. Look, go, keep your place. Keep your okay. place. The food drive. Look, if you got a member, if you're a member of Sam's, go in your back, just a case, a little case of canned goods, you know. I mean, just whatever, or you want to go, if you want, if you go to Aldi or some of these places, just buy the whole thing and. I mean, really, folks, I mean, we could we could put a bunch of stuff there, but not a lot of money. Let's put it like this. You can go to McDonald's and buy almost two cases of some kind of vegetable for that price of that two double quarter pounders and french fries and drinks. And you'd feel a whole lot better in all kinds of ways. <laughs> Physically, spiritually, emotionally, <laughs> you would just feel better donating food to other people than your, happy, your, burger, your McDonald's meal or Burger King or whatever else. <coughs> so let's just let's go get this done. Amen? Yeah. I say, we're already doing the presents for the kids. Yep. Let's let our, let, let, let our compassions enlarge Amen. and minister to other people. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. <coughs> Urban Ministries does a great job. They have for, for a long, long time. The guy who came here and founded it was from Greenville and um, knew, knew my mother-in-law. She would always talk to me. When he came back, we'd come to the drugstore and visit, and she talked to so my son and daughter, my son-in-law and daughter in Greensboro, and, you know, they would talk and stuff. So um, it, they've just done a really good job. And let's, let's not, when a lot of people are closing up their compassions, let's enlarge ours. Yeah. Amen? Amen? It's just, you know, honestly, you know, I mean, there's, we know we can do big. Amen. We can do big. We can do, we can do big and, and be big help. Okay. We all good? Yep. Go. Okay. And on that, 
Um, we don't have a date set yet, but keep an eye out first quarter of next year. We are going to be doing, you guys remember when we did the homeless outreach, we served soup and we gave out toiletries and all that kind of stuff. We're going to be doing that first quarter again, which is right beside Urban Ministries in the parking lot in that area. So we will be doing that, so keep an eye out for that, but we don't have a date set yet. Um, and then on December 22nd at 2 p.m., Forged Youth, we are having a social and gift exchange at Pika Tea on Stanley Road in Greensboro. <laughs> so it's a bubble tea place. <laughs> the kids know what it is. <laughs> There is, um, just go talk to Janie for clarity, okay? All right. There, there will be a church baby shower, okay? There is, a, um, there is a family and friends one, okay, like work, work friends and all that kind of stuff. But So that, there, that, that may be some of the confusion. So um, anyway, praise the Lord, okay? Not that, we, not that you're not loved. It's just we're having a church shower, Okay? All right. Amen. Um, you covered everything, right? Look, we're real excited about the app. Okay. Um, we um, made a decision to go that route. And, um, you know, we're going to do on our own. You know, it's just cheaper. It's always cheaper to do your own. But then we're also... The Lord's been dealing with me about a couple things. One is standardization, making everything kind of standardized where anybody can walk in and pick it up. Now, Brother Bill and myself and Dick, we're, we're geeky programmer type. And Belinda, by the way, in case y'all didn't know that. Belinda, Belinda was a systems analyst. So that was means she's smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm, not, I'm in 2019 version. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Well, so Tom knows how. But, okay, so Tom knows how to program DBase. I do. And that's it. Okay. We got to standardize. So uh, the, one, of, one of the things that we have done with our, our, our buying into Tithely, which is going to be our producer of our app, um, we're going to be able to start giving through it also. It's one of our other mains. Don't have, don't have to switch over. But to give us text to give. It also includes general ledger membership track. <laughs> I'll be migrating to a standardized platform where whatever. I know Brother Bill. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. <laughs> what, that I'm migrating? <laughs> yeah, yeah. what we have hooked up with now is we get the, we get a app and they, and they do all the back, you know, we just enter the stuff in the background but it's already designed for us it's what's the word i'm looking for customized to us with our logos our pictures da 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 da, da. and it's cross platform apple you know uh, pc android all of that it just it does it goes it and we can live stream our services to the app Isn't that outstanding? Yeah. So we're excited. Okay. Yep. We have groups. So we can create all kinds of groups, you know, not groupies, groups. Okay. Yeah. So every, every department, and even some we dream up, can have a group. Church-wide, nursery, parents, youth parents, children's church parents, ushers, you know, prayer groups, you know, hospitality, all can have their own group and send out blast emails to those people only, okay? So if you're like, I don't want to come to the church and wash dishes, that's not my thing, okay? I'll be glad to vacuum, but I don't want to do the hospitality thing, that's not me. I hate a kitchen. Okay? All right. Yeah. There's not a woman in here that says that. Anyway, <laughs> we can, you, you don't have to be in the hospitality group. And so instead of getting a blast email to the whole church, 
the hospitality group can get its own text. Okay? It's customized. So it's very customizable, and we're really excited about it. And um, I, I hate, you know, even this, you know what we're going to be doing? We're going to standard. Uh, hold on, Brother Bill. Just, we are going to standardize with the evil empire, with Microsoft, um, for our, I know, I know. Just, you're praying for me now, we're going to pray for you. How about that? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm standardizing on the church software. We're going to standardize with Microsoft and so that everybody, you know, can interchange with ease. Uh, one of our biggest complaints where we work in the school system is we have non-integratable software. We got this package, we got this package, we got this package, and there has to be a uh, fix. That's not the right word, but a fix. An interface between the two written specifically to make them work together. And you got to jump through hoops to figure out how to get this data over to this data with this thing that doesn't integrate. Okay? And so, and so it just, it just we're, going, we're standardizing. We're going, we're electronically, on the technology side, we're going to standardize uh, in the church to make us more efficient. Why? So that we can give ourselves to ministry instead of having to, you know, well, Goes Janie says, Janie says, hand me your phone. Because she gets so aggravated with me going, well, how do you do that? And I, you know, it doesn't make sense. It's a stupid program. That idiot who programmed that. How many, how many go to use your swiper at the cash register? You know, credit card. And it doesn't work the way the one it does at Food Line. Okay? It's backwards. Everybody writes there's different. I think, why did they just have a standard? Everybody do it the same way. Why does it have to be, you know, you wrote your own little code so that it does the same thing, but it does it quirky? Or it's just not the same from store to store? Why? <laughs> no, it tests it test your sanctification. <laughs> all right. Anyway, so all that, we're really excited about this. This, this first step is with the, with the app. And uh, that's an exciting adventure, and uh, make us, it's going to make us better communicators, okay? So once you get, get um, accustomed to using it, it will be a, be a real benefit to you. Uh, check what's going on in the church. Click, there's a calendar. Oh, there's, okay? Your, your, your cell phone will be there, and all of a sudden it'll go off and say, Expedition Church, you know, and it'll tell you what's going on. Isn't that exciting? How many don't use a cell phone? Anybody here that doesn't use a cell phone? Because we were going to buy you one. No, okay. <laughs> I'm just teasing. We're not buying you a cell phone. <laughs> let's, let's receive the offering. Hallelujah. And look, guys, it's coming for y'all too. If you want to be able to get on try app, uh, join us on December the 3rd. We'll, we, we'll show the, can we put the QR code up on the service that day? Yeah. yeah. So that you guys can QR code and get in on the app and join us. Praise the Lord. We'll launch December the 3rd. Right. We're already in beta test. We're, you know, we're already running beta. Um, and that's, that's cool programmer terminology for we're running tests on it to make sure it works right. Yeah. So we're doing about a month in the background. Just, you know, it's, it's actually out there. We're just running in the background to get it ready to use, to launch. Okay? All right. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to receive the morning offering. Praise God. That was too much time spent on that, but we are excited about it. Hallelujah. Because it, it'll make us better and more effective with you guys. Amen? Amen. And uh, instead of going, I, I, we could even we could even have a prayer prayer chain thing on there too. Yeah, okay, prayer wall. So if you've got a prayer request and, you know, um, or you call the church and say, Pastor, I'm really not doing good, we can put it out there and alert the whole church and everybody can jump in and get praying on it. Okay, yeah, we have a prayer group and a prayer wall. Prayer wall is a prayer request, basically. Okay, prayer group will be, the, you know, is our Wednesday night Zoom type people, and then, um, in which anybody can join, but the, the prayer wall, let me say something, it ain't like, like, it ain't like normal, Lord, don't let my name get on the chalkboard of the Southern whatever church, because everybody here has all got on their died, okay, Lord, I'm putting my name on the Expedition Church one, amen, hallelujah, because they get them healed, amen, hallelujah, all right, we thank you. Glory to God. Give K K PayPal, cash app, check, cash. 
Hallelujah. You ready? In the name of Jesus, we pray over the offering. We thank you that heaven's windows are open unto you. Blessings are poured out. You don't have room enough to receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe. Receive the offering. Glory to God for in-house giving. Electronic, go ahead and send that. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. And we're going to need more ushers. Amen. I think we need a volunteer tab. Sign up to be a volunteer. Yeah, that'll be on there. She'll have it on there tonight. I know, I know her. But just say volunteer, sign up. Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. Praise God. Children's Church out of here already? All right. Praise God. All right. Open up your Bibles, if you will, once again to the uh, 103rd Psalm as we uh, read our foundation text from Healing is for All. Glory to God. Psalm 103. Verses 1 through 3, actually 1 through 4, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And forget not all of his benefits. Amen. Hallelujah. Or you know, bless the Lord, my soul, again, and, oh, my, and forget not all his benefits. Now, we said this before. Underline it because these are his benefits. Okay? You don't earn benefits, they come with a package. Adrian on in our teaching on the healing is for all. And it's right there with forgiveness of sin. He forgives all your iniquities. Glory to God. And so we see this, you know, this transfer here to the church. As the Father sent me, I send you. With what? The same commission. He went round about in that village just teaching the gospel, teaching and preaching and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for that God was with him. Amen? He went teaching, preaching, and healing. He went teaching, preaching, and healing. Amen? And so this is the commission to the church. Go heal, go, go preach, go teach, heal. Dan Hagen says, I was listening to him on, on an old tape recently. Well, it was a tape that was copied over to an MP3, which I now have on an old iPod, the 260-gig iPod or whatever it was. Okay, and um, he said this. He said something really interesting. He said that when I started laying hands on the sick and teaching divine healing in public meetings, I got uh, more people saved, not, not filled with the Holy Ghost, not healed. I got more people born again than I had in the previous 10 years of ministry in one year. Preaching, evangelistically, people to get saved, come to Christ. You know, you know, 10 years of that. He said he got more saved in, in one year than he had in those 10 years put together preaching on healing and ministering to the sick. Well, how could that be? They saw the goodness of God. They saw the mercies of God. They saw the compassions of God. And it drew them in. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, you know, we, we need to be, as believers... In the kingdom of God, not only believing that God will heal us individually and personally, but that he wants to minister to the world. Amen. Rem remember this. Everything in the Bible is not just about you being cool. Everything being great with you. God wants everything great with you. But that, that, that's not where it stops. You know, they got this new saying they say now. You hear it all the time. Pay it forward. You know, bless somebody else, you know, somebody, somebody blesses you, you go bless somebody else. So the whole thing, you ever hear people going, well, I'm just paying it forward. I'm just paying it forward. And, um, it's just, what you're really saying is I've been blessed and I want to be a blessing. It's just new slang lingo. They don't want to use Bible lingo to say that they want to use cool, hip street talk, pay it forward, man. What you mean, man? You know, pay it forward. Yeah. But you know, bro. Oh, not even bro anymore, it's bruh. <laughs> don't mess with me, bruh, here at school. Bruh, don't bother me first thing this morning. Uh, listen, if there's one thing hadn't changed here. I ain't your bruh, and you're the student. Now, let's go. <laughs> I saw this sister principal one day. I said, yeah, they get it. say, you ain't my teacher. She said, look, you just tell them this. The, the whole thing in this dynamic that, that hasn't changed is, you're the student. 
<laughs> and that is, that's the end of the conversation. All right. But pay it forward. You know, we, we want to be blessed. God wants to bless you. God wants you well. God wants you sound spiritually. God wants you sound emotionally. God wants you sound mentally. God wants you sound physically. He wants you sound financially. But then he wants you to, in turn, take that position you're in and share it with others and help them come to that same place. Amen? So as I have sent you, I mean, as the Father sent me, so send I you. We want to take this to other people. So we're under a commission. Well, let's look at the commissions of the, of the church. The first one is the 12. <coughs> Matthew chapter 10, and starting in verse 1. And when he had called unto him his, his well, let's just, let me get over there. I got it in my notes, but I'm going to go over there. I am too much fun. Guys, I don't, look, can somebody take over? I want to have fun with them. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, when he called his 12 disciples, he gave them power or authority uh, against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And then he lists off the 12, you know, disciples of who they all were. And you can read that. Verse uh, um, 5, these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, <coughs> go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city, but um, of the Samaritans, and here ye not, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Now, let's stop here. As far as we're reading here. Now, this particular commission was during, during his earthly ministry, and he was sent to Israel first. Because he had to fulfill not do away with, but fulfill the law and fulfill that line, that, that line so that he could become Savior to the whole world. The early church was a Jewish church. When they were called Christians at Antioch, okay, okay, it was, it was still dealing with a Jewish church. The Gentiles came, and remember Peter had this big hoopah blob that he withdrew himself because certain ones came from Jerusalem, and he was out there eating with a bunch of Gentiles who got saved. Okay, and they were still kind of hung up on this whole clean, unclean, you know, undefiled, defiled thing. And uh, Peter withdrew himself and so forth. Paul came and rebuked him openly. Okay, but we're talking about, so their first commission was to the Jews. All right. Because he was the fulfillment of the covenant at that point in time. Now, this is important. That commission is later elevated by Jesus himself. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and, and jump up there. I'm not going to read all that right now because I want to share the other ones. But he comes to the disciples and says, go, to, go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen? Now, and in Mark's, he says, go and you'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Remember that? Preach the gospel. Amen? Cast out devils. Speak with new tongues. Any daily thing that they uh, drink shall not harm them. Amen. They shall take up serpents and they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So the commission becomes elevated by the head of the church himself from just the Jews to all humanity. So we can look into this commission and see a thread of things that continues. Here in the first, the first one he gave to the disciples, Heal the sick. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Amen? Isn't that what he said? Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Devils. I mean devils. All right? But freely you have received, freely give. Now look down into um, Luke's gospel, the 10th chapter. I'm not a numerologist guy, so you know I don't think there's anything special about the fact they divide it up so Matthew 10 and Luke 10 have commissions in them. Glory to God. But Luke 10, now remember the first one was with the 12. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 and sent them two by two. Now that's 35 teams, by the way. Just in case you couldn't figure that one out. Okay. I know you can. And sent them two by two before his face into every place 
and whether he himself would come. And therefore he said unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among the wolves. Carry neither purse, nor scrip, nor shoes, nor salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house you enter, first say, Peace be to you. A peace be to this house. And if the son of peace be there, your rest shall open, open it, upon, be upon you. If not, it shall return to you. And in the same house, remain eating and drinking such things as they give you, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Into whatsoever ye enter, and they shall receive you, eat such things as they set before you, and heal the sick. Now, right up until now, he's just given them instruction on how to conduct themselves. Now he's telling them what to do. Now, notice what he says here. Again, same kind of terminology. And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Now, what is it? The mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. What is it about this? The kingdom is near you, and people are getting well. Hello? We, we're getting a foreshadowing glimpse into something hallelujah, that Paul writes later. Amen? He writes later when he says this, that the law of the, uh, and to the church at Rome, okay, he says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Can you say amen? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Glory. So now the kingdom of God gets near us and people get well. Why? Because it's part of God's redemptive process. Amen. They didn't say um, uh, the kingdom of God's near you. Everybody get saved. That's part. That's what, that's what God wants. Everybody to be born again. But he's, he's giving a natural sign and wonder to people so that they can see in action God's compassions and God's mercies by healing the sick. He's so full of compassion for humanity. Yes, he wants you born again. He wants you delivered from sin. He wants you delivered from oppression. He wants you delivered from all the gunk and the junk that sin brings into life. But he also wants your body well. He loves you. And he, his compassions bring a delivering hand Praise God to people's bodies. Just his kingdom getting near them. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see that with Jesus, you know, uh, the hem of his garment, touching the hem of his garment. They got healed. We see that with Peter. His shadow fell on people. And people got healed. Isn't that right? So the kingdom, there should be health and healing taking place because the kingdom is near people. Amen. Amen. So as we minister to people and we're praying for them and they're getting healed, we just say the kingdom of God's come unto you. This is, the, this is what the kingdom is about, making you whole, making you sound. How glory to God. Spirit, soul, and body, praise God. God didn't give you the cancer. God didn't put AIDS on you. Come on. God didn't run over your child to teach you a lesson. No, raising people up, ministering life to them is the kingdom of God in manifestation. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. And people need to know that God cares for them that much. Amen. You're going to burn a devil's hell. You're going to grovel at the altar of Satan. Oh, if you don't get right with God today. God wants people. Now, there's penalty for rejecting God. I mean, we know hell is a destiny of people who reject God and die in that place of rejection. That's not God's plan. He wanted to bring the kingdom to them so they didn't have to. Let me say it this way. Every human alive on the planet today, their destiny is hell unless they're born again. <clears throat> God has provided the means to change that destiny. Amen. Amen. And so he brings the kingdom to them to change their destiny because of his love for them. Amen. All right. So we got the, we got the 12, we got the 70. 
Now run over here. Uh, I, eh, oh, mm, mm, um. Verse 17. I'm sorry, back, back up where you were. Luke 10, verse 17. And the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. Now, <coughs> he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, <clears throat> notwithstanding. Rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. <clears throat> we can get so cocky about God, all this power. Amen. That we forget to be grateful that it's because the only reason we got the power is because we're in the Lamb's book of life. We're, 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 our names are in heaven. We're children of God. It's been granted to us. And that it's He in us doing the work, not us. You know? You can get cocky about the power and, mis and misapply the very thing God's intended for people to be set free with and use it to elevate how great you are. Instead of how great thou art, you walk around saying, how great I am, how great I am. Gag a maggot. It takes a lot to gag a maggot. <laughs> you ever seen the stuff they eat? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Did that just gross you all out? Anybody got grossed on that one? I can make it even better. We were at camp. We were there a few weeks ago, and they had a, a they got a, a, a rolling thing. They put all the trash in from the dining hall, and apparently didn't get taken out when it should have. Taken to the dump, dumped out. And I, so um, uh, it, somehow or another, one of the kids kind of hit it and it fell backwards. And I mean, it's like this moving mass of maggots. I mean, big maggots. I mean, some, them boys have been chomping on something. But they were big, old, nasty man. I mean, it may have just been what we call horse flies come out of them things. A big, this is moving mass of slimy, white, nasty. Anyway, and they weren't grossed out. I was grossed out. They weren't. <laughs> Hallelujah. We, I said that because, you know, the, the attitude is not to gag a maggot. It stinks. Our hearts should be God's heart. We want to bless people, help people because, he, because we love people. And God has sent, sent us so we can help them. Jesus was sent. We've taken his now transfer of commission. And now we're going out with that same one to minister to people. Amen. So, not, so don't, get, don't get excited about you got authority over the devil. Just use it. Do your job and just come back and worship God that your late names in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Heaven's good. Heaven's real. God's awesome. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Devils ain't nothing. I got authority. If you get out of my way. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> you don't have to get all excited about it. I got authority over the devil. You got authority over the devil. Okay. Now use it. As it needs to be used, and go worship God. Don't, don't worry about the devil. Don't, don't you know? I now I don't know about you, but you know the past oh, 15, 20 years, and like particular in particular, pro football, pro basketball, the uh, barbarian dance of a, of great power over your opponent has started taking place. You know. They get they tackle the they sack the quarterback and that guy go out there and do all this and all this stuff. Play a stupid football game. I mean, seriously, just go play the game. Uh, Cam started getting on my nerves near the end of his time with Carolina. Honestly, I mean you know Superman. Look, listen, Cam, you're two and twelve. Big whoop. You scored a touchdown at 2 and 12. I think, why don't you stop doing all the charades and go play football? Maybe if you're 16 and 0, you could do this. 
Or in you know, basketball, you know, you're, you're, you're 30 and 60. They can't be 30 and 60. They don't have, they don't have that many games. Um, you're 3 and 60, you know, and you hit a 3 to run down the court, you know, like, wow, I hit a 3. Big whoop. My grandma would hit a 3. She shot that many. Okay? They're, they're all gorilla wing and and heaving. I'm out. You're not losing record, pal. Come on. Are y'all here? You're going home. Now, that kind of attitude comes into the church. I got authority over the devil. Arr! Not without Jesus. Not without the greater one on the inside. And it's authority. You've been granted the authority. It's the dunamis that stands behind it that makes that authority worth anything. You remove the one who's got the dunamis, and you're in big whoop trouble. Hello? You can't beat the devil in the natural. So Jesus said, don't get, all, don't get caught up in that. Don't get caught all up in, you know, I got authority over the devil. Rawr. Just use your authority. Understand where it's coming from. Understand who granted it to you. And understand the reason scared the devil scared of it is because he's already been whooped by the one who stands behind it. Amen. The head of the church, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Glory to God. Can you say amen? So when we say, when we find out we've got authority, praise God, we've got authority. Thank you, Father, that I, I can go do your work and carry out your will. And I got authority over the devil in the name of Jesus. But I'm just going to rejoice. I'm in the Lamb's book of life. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you're working in me is setting other people free and bringing them into that same place that I'm in. Amen. Can you say amen? Now, you might go hear a sermon, you know, because you got a lot of people who say, well, I'm going to authority, but I don't know how to use it. I'm scared to use it. I just don't know what to do with it. Let's don't go to that ditch either. When you recognize who's in you and who stands behind everything, you don't have to be afraid and you don't have to be cocky. Paul said, I, I know how to live exalted. Are you here? And not lose my poise. And I know how to be abased and not lose my head. You don't have to get all freaked out because you got too much. And you don't have to be all beaten down because you don't have enough. And then he said this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can say level. Amen. This is... <laughs> This is why Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the devil, against the wiles of the devil in the evil day. And he goes down and lists all the armor, and he says this. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Now, J.B. Phillips' uh, translation uh, of, the, of the New Testament says it this way. And having fought the battle to the end, remain on the battlefield ready to do battle again. Which is kind of what Jesus is saying here. Don't rejoice because you got authority over the devils. Because see, we've already got the object lesson to this. I've shared it before, but we've already got this object lesson to rejoicing over the victory and forgetting to follow through with your commission. David did not take five stones to Goliath because he thought he might miss four times. Goliath had four brothers. He was supposed to kill all of them. But he got so excited about David killed his, Saul has killed his thousands, and David's killed his ten thousands, and he's running around with the head and dancing that he, he took down Goliath. He let the other four get away. Y'all hear you going on? He should, he should have pursued them and taken them all out right then. Took him the rest of his life to kill the other four. Even so bad, he got so old, he had to have help getting the last one. 
He couldn't do it. He, could, he had the strength to do it. All those years, they've had to put up with the, with the aggravation of those other four who probably had taken conspiracy to get David eventually for killing their brother. There was even a six-finger giant. I know. My name is an eagle Montoya. You've killed my father. Prepared to die. Okay? <laughs> the Princess Bride. You know, the dumbest movie ever put the film. <laughs> that I have now become appreciative of the work of stupidity. Yes, I watch it because I guess like it's, everybody loves this movie so much and I think it's so stupid that I've got to figure out what it is I like about it. And then it grows on you. It's like, it, oh, no, no don't, don't grow on me. Don't grow on me. Okay. Jesus is telling them, don't rejoice in the wrong thing. It's no, listen, it's no big deal. You got authority over the devil. It came with the new birth. It came with who you are in Christ. You have the name. It is a big deal. Your name is in the Lamb's book of life. Your name's written down in heaven. That's a big deal. Amen. Amen? That's something to rejoice about. Glory to God. Y'all hear you going home. So Paul kind of wraps it up in New Testament thought. Having fought the battle to an end, remain on the battlefield ready to do battle again. What's he saying? Stay focused on your commission. Stay focused on what you're called to do. Stay focused on what God has for you. Don't get up. Don't quit. Go write a book and go on the, on the, on the book market, on the book, book circuit, on all the Christian television channels. Don't you throw any virtual darts at me out there. <laughs> Amen. I got a testimony. And then you can make you living off the testimony. You may get back. You know, listen. What'd you do? You got off the battlefield and started, started the book tour. Get back out there and do battle. Get out there and minister to people. Get out there and do your job. Oh, but the book's going to help people. Oh, come on, guys. Don't let the world. Listen. Some people are supposed to write books, and some people ain't supposed to write books. Hello? And not anybody can write a book. Amen. Now, I keep getting told by my family members, Daddy, you're not write a book. I'm like, but what do I have to say? You know? I, I kind of, I'm like, what do I have to say? Do I have enough to say to the entire world, to the body of Christ, in a book form that, you know, that, that stand with, withstands theological scrutiny and all this kind of stuff? That's going to be, you know, do I? They all think I do, but I'm, I'm kind of self-emaciating. I'm like, well, you know, yeah. Okay? And then other people write books, you pick it up, you go, what in the world were they thinking? <coughs> Why were they writing a book? Okay? And I wasn't saying that, so you can come back to me at church and go, Pastor, you really ought to write a book. Okay? Make sure you have the title when you do. I mean, I really need to write a 175-page dissertation. <laughs> that number just kind of gets under my skin a little bit. I don't want to write that much. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, we've even looked into, you know, voice software so I don't have to write. Yeah. It don't understand Eastern Carolinian. I spend more time correcting than it does actually writing out words. Okay. So here we go. Don't get excited about having authority. Be excited if you're a believer. Be excited if you're part of the family of God. Be excited that God's your father. Hallelujah. And that he's, he has sent you in his name, in his stead, to do work in the earth, to carry his heart to people. And it's not about how many devils you cast out last week. I cast out 35 devils out of this guy. Okay. Big whoop. They were supposed to come out. You're a believer. Mm -hmm. Amen. Are you here? You're going home. Amen. All right. Now you understand, that's kind of another side to add. It's just that all about that is attitude. Your heart. Are, are you wanting to be the, the guy who has the biggest demon cast out ministry on the planet? 
And why? Why? Is it because you really want people free or you just want to be able to let everybody know that you are the one who can cast that, cast that devil out? But y'all ought, ought to go get Brother Summerall's book. I don't know if it's actually actively in public uh, production anymore, Bill, uh, Bitten by Devils. Okay. Um, it might be out there in a used book place or something. Bitten by Devils by Lester Summerall. He tells of the girl in Manila, Philippines. I know, listen, just stay with me because we're following the Holy Ghost, all right? Um, you know, where she, he, he was a Manila as a missionary, and they, the doctors at, a, at an insane asylum started, you know, started going on the radio and just broadcasting over the whole nation, please help us, help this girl. And they would play live audio of this girl, and she's screaming, and, there's, and there, was, then there were men watching. She's, bite marks are appearing on her body. And she would disappear. You know, I mean, I remember the first time I heard him tell the story. I was at Rama, and I'm going, <laughs> the hair's going. Zzzz. I am like, I'm like, okay, I grew up Pentecostal. I've heard about cats, down, but that scares the snot out of me. And he went in young and cocky. He go cast this devil out. He got in there. And after a few minutes, that turned around, walked back out, and thought, "My God, I need to do do something. I'm in this is over my head." Hello, and he went before the Lord because he couldn't cast the devil out, and he had to get before the Lord and get get himself humbled, and get him. The Lord said, "This kind comes out by fasting and prayer," and he had to. What, what does fasting do? It changes us, not God. It suppresses the flesh. It suppresses. The cockiness, it suppresses the how great I am, and it opens you up and gets you in tune with God. And when they went back, I mean, they actually, she would pull hair, this hair out. She'd have hair in her hands from nowhere, and it was like, like human hair, and it wasn't animal hair. Demon. You know, I, don't, I don't believe in all that. Okay. You don't have to. But he was recognized as an expert exorcist in the court system of, the Amer of America. They would call him in to testify in cases where um, they were saying demon activities involved in this case. That's why the person did what they did. And he was. Oh, you can get it in PDF. Is it from the C? From the C.org? Goodreads. All right. You can go to Goodreads online and download the PDF of that book, Bitten by Devils by Lester Summerall. Be prepared to get freaked a little bit, okay? Because I think that book kind of, I mean, even him, him telling the story live, me sitting there watching, listening to it, telling the person was like, ooh. I mean, you know, forget the Blair Rich Project. I mean, this thing, this thing is, Okay. But he ended up casting the devil out of the girl. And because she got free, the whole nation knew about it. He became a national hero. He started the church, the largest church in the Philippines, and that church is still there today. Okay? But it wasn't because he was cocky. His cockiness went in there and got run out. Are you here? When we go to minister to people, don't be, I'm the healing person in the building today. No. Pal, it's the anointing that heals them, not you. Well, anchors and aprons, Paul, they took Paul's hands and anchors and aprons came from them and healed. Then what's what it said? And God wrought special miracles. God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Who did? God. God did it, not Paul. Paul healeth. No, God did it through him. Yes. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Okay, we're going to, we're going to wrap. Um, Mark chapter 16. Did y'all get that whole point? Yes. We have to get back to loving and serving God and doing what we're told to do because we love the people that he loves. Yes. And doing it not, he will not share his glory with anybody. 
Are you here? You go getting cocky about somebody getting healed because you prayed for them? I prayed for them. They got healed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, praise God. We thank God. Yeah. What you're really think, saying is, look at me. Look at me. God will not share his glory. Dad Hagen used to tell us all the time, watch out for the three G's in ministry. Amen? The gold, the girls, and the glory. That second one get a man in big trouble. Oh, yeah. We don't have a three B's for ministry. I don't know how we good with that, you know. The bullion, the boys, and the boasting. There we go. All right. Kind of made that work, didn't I? <laughs> In bouillon, not, 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 not bouillon and chicken bouillon, bouillon cubes, but gold. Yeah. I did make it work. Thank you, Lord. You did it. Not me. Mark 16. <clears throat> Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Who? The Jews? <clears throat> There's a change of venue here. We are now going from the 12 to Israel. We're now going from the 70 to Israel to the, all the disciples going to the whole world. Amen. So now the commission is no longer limited to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's going to go from there to the whole world. And they didn't get it right away. So Jesus had to come later to Peter in a vision and say, that what I have cleansed, thou shalt not call it unclean. It wasn't twofold. Yeah, you can, you can eat the pig now, thank God. And the shrimp fried, of course. Hello. I like my pig. Barbecue style. Eastern Carolina. Who, who could testify that it was really good last month? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I, don't, I think I got a little bit in the freezer. It just kind of made me a little slow. Go with it. Yeah, okay. Um, but go you into all the one priest of the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. <coughs> These signs shall follow them that believe. Who? Who? So don't think you're some hot shot. Any, any believe can do this. Any one of them that believe can do this. I said any one of them that believe can do this. Yes. They don't get cocky. Yes. Amen? And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. We also have said this in the past. Take authority over demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. Does not mean have a snake handling service. If, now, if you're that stupid, just call me, you know, have your spouse call me when you're dead from getting bit. I got great faith. No, you got great stupidity. You don't go handling snakes to prove people you got faith. Jesus warns us about that. Hello. Didn't he? When in his temptation, amen, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. Um, if you drink any of the other thing, it shall not hurt you. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Here we are again. We're going to preach on the gospel and what's included in it. Healing. Every commission he gave included healing. Everyone included healing. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, <coughs> for God was with him. Amen. I said, amen. amen. God's with him. He anointed him to heal the sick. That did not change. When he commissioned, when he commissioned the, the last part before he left, go to the world and preach the gospel. He, and, one, and the last thing he said, and to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And that was the whole world. Everybody 
anybody that got born again could now lay hands on the sick and see people recover. It's part, why? Because it's the kingdom of God coming nigh unto them. Amen. It's that glorious kingdom. Amen. Instead, we got people preaching in the pulpit saying, God made them sick, you know, to you know, teach them a lesson, and we don't understand why he didn't get healed. But now they have the ultimate healing. <coughs> yeah, gag a maggot. I got that, you know, that, you got the little emoticon, you know, the one with the, the smiley face throwing up the green vomit. Four of those right across the, your, your mind right now. Boom, boom, boom. We need to have that on the screen. We can put it up. Gag a maggot kind of thing. Don't. That was a joke. Bill would probably go draw one day and maggots coming out. You know, <laughs> I'm messing. So if the kingdom of God coming nigh heals, and the kingdom of God's in you. Then you come in now and should bring healing to people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lay well, down on the inside of you. There's one called the greater one. Hallelujah. And he's greater than he that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. Amen. Amen. And glory to God. And we have an unction from the Holy One. Yes. Amen. Amen. We got it. We got what? The anointing. It's on us. It's in us. Yes. The kingdom of God's in us. We used to sing that little chorus. The kingdom of God is within me. Amen. And I don't remember how it goes after that. Huh? I know no defeat, only victory. That, that's like, I don't have the tune. Yep, she's right. That's, that was the next line. Kingdom of God is within me. I know no defeat, only victory. Kingdom of God is within me. I know the, no defeat, only strength and power. It's on the inside of us. Yes. Yeah, don't, don't, don't come to church to hear me sing. Um, I'll probably do it anyway, but don't come to church to hear, because you want to hear me sing. Just put up with it. Okay? Glory to God. I mean, we can't auto-tune me. You can auto tune me all day long, and it's just going to be, well, that you're just going to get what you're going to get. I grew up being told by my parents, boy, shut up that racket. You couldn't carry a tune in the bucket. <laughs> I tried one day. The bucket bottom fell out. So anyway, I, I figured they were right. Healing is our purpose. We carry healing to the nations. We carry it to hurting people. We want to bring the kingdom to them. Amen? I felt like T.L. Osborne for a second. Healing is the per church purpose. Yes. Yes. Say wow. 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 Say that backwards. Wow. <laughs> God loves you. He loves people. Amen. How's that, Brother Bill? Not bad. Okay. Love Brother Osborne. He loved people so much. He learned French and Spanish so he could, because if you speak French, Spanish, and English, you could reach 90% of the world's population. So he learned to speak in French and Spanish and preach in French and Spanish and read in it so he could minister to more people. Just so he could reach more people. Not that he wouldn't be a linguistic person. He just wanted to reach more people. And he didn't want to have the barriers of, you know. I'm going to tell you, preaching with interpreters are, is, a, is a job, especially if you're a preacher. Because you're going, you're on a roll, and you're going right here, and the guy's about to try to interpret. Can't imagine just running off and leaving behind, can you? And you come to yourself after you've just gone off this whole thing, and they're all looking at you like, and you turn around, he's like, you kind of left me behind there, pal. People, let's bring the kingdom to them. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. All righty. Um, don't forget, no service this week during the week. We will be back here next Sunday morning. We look forward to seeing you back. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, uh, I don't know if we can get pre-forgiveness for overeating. You probably get it afterwards. Amen. Um, I plan on eating more than I normally would. I'm just telling you up front. We were having turkey. We are having mashed potatoes. We are having, you know, um, 
sweet potato. Oh, we're cooking fresh sweet potatoes. So we're going to make the souffle out of fresh sweet potatoes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I mean, we had to say we're going to do green beans or collards. We, I got the collards on the freezer. We, we, we harvested earlier this year. So, but, um, you know, corn, all cranberry sauce. Mm. Stuffing. Turkey stuffed with the stuffing now. Uh, the, the pan stuff. Does anybody have to do oysters on theirs? I got a word for you. Listen to your wife. <laughs> yeah. Remember that story I told about Brother Hagen laying hands on him? You've been hard headed, didn't listen to your wife? <laughs> I wouldn't hardly eat oyster I mean, stuffing at home growing up because I wasn't sure if they had stuffed oysters in that one or not. When I saw him up that can, that slimy hot twoies, I went about to. Anyway, I used to cook oysters at Parker's. I was the best oyster cooker they had. I don't know how you can be the best oyster cooker that they have in the restaurant and you don't eat them yourself. <laughs> Stick your hand down the can and come up and all that slime everywhere. And <sighs> Go for it, Tom. Yeah go, yeah, go ahead, man. All right. Praise the Lord. We love all of you. Thank you for being with us today. Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving time. Spend time with your family. Bring the kingdom of God to people. Hallelujah. And let healing flow out of your, your life to other people in Jesus' name. Till we meet again, we love you. God bless you. Join us next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Good day.